Welcome to worship on this day. 
Uh, there are a number of announcements that are in your handout there, of uh, your announcement sheet. Uh, just a reminder, especially of the special congregational meeting on Wednesday, that's at seven o'clock. Uh, first 15 minutes will be dedicated to the resumption of the annual meeting of the endowment fund, and then we will move into the next matter at hand, which is a discussion of the report that we received from the Synod Task Force that was with us. So this is your opportunity to make comment, to ask questions, and the guidelines and rules for how we will operate that evening will be explained at the meeting. Um, down at the bottom of your page, you'll see pray for Haiti and for Afghanistan. For, in both places, there's going to need, be financial need. As far as with Afghanistan, you may have been reading that Fort McCoy uh, up near Toma is going to be the host for quite a number of the refugees, similar to what it was for um, people from Vietnam, from Cambodia, Laotian folks that came over. And so there will be some costs involved with that. I'm sure that uh, Lutheran World Relief will be involved in that one some way. And also that Lutheran disaster response is gearing up to help out in Haiti. There are many places that one can give to help with these relief efforts. I always trumpet Lutheran disaster response and Lutheran world relief in these matters. And the main reason why is that when these disasters happen especially, the ELCA picks up all of the costs as far as administration goes. So the money that you give goes directly to relief rather than paying salaries or anything like that. Um, the two top world relief organizations are uh, Lutheran Disaster Response and Catholic Charities. They are the top two rated in the world. So we will get you more information about that just as soon as we can. We have uh, a change in our worship pattern to announce this morning. Over the next several weeks, we will be normalizing our worship more still will require masks. Um, if you've been looking at the infection rate, just a month and a half ago in Kenosha County, it was two per 100,000. As of yesterday afternoon, it was 23.9 per 100,000. This Delta variant is a fast mover. Um, one of the statistics that I've read said that with just the regular strain of COVID, a person who's infected would infect about two other people. With this variant, it's eight. So it's much easier, transmittable, and it also has more severe consequences for a lot of our folks. So what we will be doing is we'll have one change in worship today, but I'm going to hold on to that for a few minutes here. Um, the second Sunday of September, we will be returning to full liturgy, uh, full sung liturgy with Kyrie and all of that, three hymns and communion here down front as well. And to make that happen, communion servers will be wearing masks and gloves, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, our COVID task force really wrestled with all of this, as did our church council the other night. As always with this pandemic, it's that's for now. We'll see what happens next. Because as we've seen, things got way better and now things have gotten way worse. We, uh, uh, Nurse Sue likes to say this a lot, that we are living science right now. And so things do change, uh, even from day to day at times. So anyway, uh, that is coming. Um, Dick and I have been talking a lot about choirs and things. It, we're not ready to do that yet again because it's so many people in one spot and singing but other alternatives to a full choir are being looked at and addressed as well. As far as organizations meeting in, in our building, whether they are organizations of ours or outside groups, we are still on hold with that unless the group is 12 people or less and can meet in the chapel lounge. The reason why is the chapel lounge has windows, and so that allows fresh air to come in while groups are meeting. We do not have that in the rest of our building. So Sunday school classrooms, none of them have windows and we don't have the proper air exchange. So we are looking into air sanitizing devices. We've got a list of several that we're checking into and checking into cost. And as soon as 
we're able to do that, then we can start to resume some of our activities. A number of people have asked about Friendly Center. Well, the problem for Friendly Center is the space that's being used, and that is our fellowship hall. There is no air exchange in our fellowship hall because it is hot water heat and there is no air conditioning in there. So it's really not a safe atmosphere for people who will be taking off masks to eat, you know, because mouths are open then in transmission. So we really do wrestle with every piece of this, and we really appreciate your patience and your support as well. One final note before we worship this morning, and that was I was notified early this morning that May Harris passed away. Um, May was 90 years old, and after the death of her husband, Jack, had moved to Florida and lived with her son. So um, memorials and other arrangements are still pending. We'll let you know uh, when something happens. So we will keep uh, the family of May in our prayers this morning as well. That's all I have for announcements, believe it or not. So we begin our worship this morning with confession and forgiveness. And our first change to worship is, I invite you to stand as you are able. And please do keep masked. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We remain standing and join in singing our opening song, O Happy Day When We Shall Stand. Let us pray. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, amen.
A reading from Joshua. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the regions beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the lands of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsibly Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are upon us, upon the righteous and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who evil, who erase the remembrance of them on the The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken heart, and saves those whose spirits are Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from everyone. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O Lord, redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 6. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, Lord. 
Please stand as you are able. I have to get used to that again, of actually saying that. Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I hope there was more than just Dick over here who realized the irony of that opening hymn today. Oh, happy day when we shall stand. <laughs> that was not planned. That was not planned. A number of years ago, I told you that my uh, son and I told you about a trip that my son Philip and I took a few years ago. That makes more sense. Where we went to Australia, and it had two parts to it. The first part was in Sydney, and the reason for Sydney is that's where the airline deal that we got took us to. So we exchanged all of our points and got to fly for free um, <laughs> to Australia. But the second part was in the northeastern part of Australia along the coast, because that's where the Great Barrier Reef is. And we had decided that we wanted that to be a big part of our trip as well, both being divers. But to get there, we had to fly from Sydney to Cairns. Um, sounds like that should be spelled C-A-N-S, Cairns, but it's actually C-A-I-R-N-S. How anybody gets cans out of that one, I have no idea, but that's how you pronounce it, because we kept saying, we're going to Cairns? Uh, Cairns? Cairns? No, it's Cairns. But once we got there, you know, the trip wasn't done yet. We had to drive several hours further north to where we would actually be taking off to go out and dive on the reef. Now, driving anywhere that you're not familiar with can be rather difficult. But especially when you're driving in a country where everybody's driving on the wrong side of the road. And not only that, the steering wheel is where the glove box should be. It makes for a very interesting experience. It, you know, you wouldn't think it would, but just those two things make driving, well, you actually find yourself second guessing everything that you're doing. You know how to make a left turn when you're in the proper lane, in the left lane, but when you're making a left turn out of the right lane, it just kind of gets confusing. And that highway we went on had the biggest and most frequent roundabouts that I've ever seen in my life. It was four lanes of traffic, two going each way, which made those roundabouts enormous that you went around. So you had to get used to that. Without GPS, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have gotten there, quite honestly. Because you know how that is sometimes when your GPS is doing its thing and sometimes it drops out because there's no signal for you. And then there's times that you know you're going that direction. But the way roads are laid out sometimes, you're going that way to get to that way eventually. And when it's a place that you don't know, 
or literally in this case, it was foreign to us, and you've got these roundabouts and you're driving on the wrong side and you're sitting on the wrong side of the car, it really got confusing at times. And sometimes it's really hard to listen to that GPS voice because you just have this feeling it's giving you the wrong instructions, or at least you suspect that it's not accurate, but you have to do it anyway. It's also hard to listen to Jesus sometimes. And this text today is one of those. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, it's not easy stuff to talk to. We don't want or we can't hear some of these words because we think we know a better direction to go than what Jesus is saying, or because the words challenge us too much. Jesus had said to the people who were following him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And then after he said this, many of his disciples just walked away. You know, these are, this is one of those times in the scriptures where we have a reference both, both to the 12 disciples and then everybody else that's following Jesus too are also called disciples. For many, these words of Jesus were just too hard. They were just too hard to listen to. Some of it, frankly, was cultural. Because in the Jewish tradition, you don't eat any flesh that has blood in it. You let out all of the blood. So there's that in the background as well that's going on. Some of them took offense at the words that you would have to do something like that. And so they stopped. They simply just stopped following him and went home. It seems to me that very little has changed in 2,000 years. It's kind of still the way it is. Back then, people were happy enough to follow Jesus as long as they did, as he did, and said what they wanted him to say and do. Feed the hungry, that's good. Heal the sick. Show compassion for those who are rejected by society. And give us some comforting words to hold on to. But don't let him have too much to say about the person that I should be or the way that I should live my life. That's that kind of attitude those in our text who stopped following Jesus had. And that's the attitude of many people today as well. We're happy to follow and listen to Jesus, but if his words are hard to hear, eh, maybe we're not so excited anymore. If his words challenge us and frankly demand that we change or give up the things that we love or do something different, then perhaps it's time to find a new church. We live in an age and a culture that is frankly almost completely self-centered. If we don't like what's being said on the TV news, go to a different one. Go to a different news outlet that says it the way that's more palatable for you. If we don't like what someone says on social ministry, oh boy, we either call that person out, call them names, say hateful things, or just stop following them altogether, but never actually engage that person in a conversation about what it was that troubled us so much. And we don't want to actually listen to the hard words of Jesus either. Because we don't want to change direction. We want to keep on the same path that we're going. We have bought into the lie that life is all about me. We forget about other people. In this self-centered age, it's tempting to think that the whole reason for life is so that we may find our happiness. That that's the only reason for our life, no matter the cost to anybody else. What's important is my life and my life alone. We ignore God and we live outside of his will, but we still expect God's blessings, though. 
even though we stray off. We justify unloving and abusive actions towards others. Every one of us were tempted to ignore these hard words and say that Jesus is all about love, so it doesn't matter what we do. We don't have to change. We can no ignore or conveniently forget key passages of the Bible that are hard. But here's the interesting thing. When all of those people walked away, Jesus didn't change his message. He didn't repackage himself. No, he said the same things that he was saying before they left. These words from Jesus that we had today aren't the only hard words that Jesus speaks. How about take up your cross and follow? Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Forgive those who have wronged you. Sell your possessions and give it to the poor. Or to use a, another difficult word from Jesus in John's Gospel, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. <laughs> Any one of these little snippets could be highlighted in our bar Bibles as hard words. And we'd have so many more that we'd be highlighting. As sad it is that some refuse to follow Jesus, to refuse to follow him except on their own terms, Jesus knew that this was going to happen. I mean, he says to Peter and the others, you don't want to leave too, do you? And that's where Peter, Peter with all of his doubts and his fumblings around, shines more brightly in this passage than anywhere else he has mentioned in the New Testament. Lord, to whom shall we go? If we leave, where will we go? You have the words of, the, of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The words that Jesus spoke to these followers and speaks to us today really can be in conflict with our own internal GPS. I mean, they conflict with our political views. They can conflict with the way we have always done things. They turn our world upside down and I've got enough going on in my life right now that I don't want my world turned upside down. But I've been pondering that notion all week long about Jesus turning the world upside down. I want us to look at it in a different way. A completely different way. Not that Jesus came to turn our world upside down, but to turn it right side up to recreate the world the way that it should be into a world that is loving, that is more than tolerant of one another, that truly loves and respects one another. What is needed for us as a community of Christ is to bear that name into the community in new ways, ways that might be really hard ways as well. Let me give you an example. Perhaps, perhaps it could be responding to a need for an overnight shelter, another one here in Kenosha. I mean, we have a gymnasium. It'd be a great place to set up cots. There's bathrooms very close to that gymnasium. There's a beautiful kitchen that's ready to feed a lot of people with its own dining room. And we even have a laundry room in this building. It couldn't do a lot of people's laundry in a night, but still could. Many of you are going... We have a laundry in our building? To be honest with you, I was here one full year before I knew there was a laundry room in our building as well. Yeah, I know that's not easy, but I'm telling you what, we have one other resource that's greater than all of them that I listed. You. We got lots of us. If there's one thing St. Mary's has is we got lots of us. Lots of followers of Jesus in this congregation. Oh, I know. That conversation would be a really hard conversation. It'd be multiple hard conversations. But could it be that it's not that? It's something else. 
that arises from those, con con those conversations. Something that is more palatable that we could also do. Are we willing to dare ourselves to think outside the box? Are we willing to have the hard conversations that require us to turn off our own internal GPS? Follow a, or will we just follow a path that's easier or a path that we have known in the past? Listen to those words of Peter again. To whom shall we go? Lord, to whom shall we go? Listen to Jesus, even when those words are hard. To be so bold in our faith that we follow with deep conviction and confidence in taking up our cross and taking it out into our community. To show love to one another, even when we disagree. To listen intently and intentionally to each other, even if we really are on different sides of the fence. I think that's what Jesus is calling our community to. Jesus is calling us to do hard things. To do things that normally we would think are impossible. But let's take a stab at it. Let's take a stab at loving one another unconditionally and bearing Jesus into our world out there that really, really needs us. Thanks be to God for hard words. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders. Heal divisions and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open, up, open us to their cries. Be near to those in need of your care. Today we name before you Joyce, Kelly, Mark, Bob, Kate, Diana, Judy, Jane, Ken, Haley, and the grieving family of Nina O'Neill, and the grieving family and friends of May Harris, and also of Ward. Lord, in your mercy. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, 
new school, or new community, sustain enduring re friendships, and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share signs of peace with one another. Please stand. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body, for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Faithful God, there was no one else to whom we can go. You alone have the power of resurrection and the words of eternal life. Your son promised those who eat his flesh and drink his blood abide in him and he in them. Sanctify your people that they may, become, they may come to believe and know that you are the Holy One. Send down your Holy Spirit on this bread and cup that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. God, our stronghold, give your people the power to stand firm in faith, clothed in the armor of your spirit. Uphold any who are opposed by rulers, authorities, or spiritual forces. Be the belt of truth for those who live amid lies and the breastplate of righteousness for all who are exploited. Put shoes on the feet of your children who proclaim the gospel of peace and guard all who seek refuge behind the shield of faith. Equip any who face hostility with the helmet of salvation and the sword of your spirit. As your son's agonizing cross came before his glorious resurrection, follow the travails of your people with the wondrous coming of your kingdom that every tear-filled eye may bask in the joy of your triune majesty, one God, now and forever. Amen. The disciple came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he taught them, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the feast of God for the people of God. Let us join in this meal together. You may be seated. This is the body of Christ given for me and the blood of Christ shed for me.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. We join in our closing song, Around You, O Lord Jesus. the body of Christ.
No, I didn't. I picked the idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. Huh? I understood it the second I heard the song. <laughs>
didn't go into the office this morning. Oh, okay. I came right over here, so I didn't set up. I was all in here. So, who knows? Maybe we'll have all kinds of cops show up. Yeah, we'll, we'll offer them some flesh and blood. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. Tried out a new mask today. Oh. Found them online. You actually soak them in water, wring it out, and spin it around. And it actually keeps your throat more moist. Oh, wow. And it's actually cooler. It is actually what you advertise. I thought it was pretty awesome, actually. I was like, hey, this is working. <laughs> Alrighty. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, I'll pour the back. I'll pour the back. What was that from? Oh, um, uh, 29 last night and 63 today. Hmm. It's interesting. And it looked like more than 63, but it's because. They're all sitting more in. Yeah. yeah. I which is interesting to me. I I don't I don't go by I don't go by that anymore. I count. Right. And we're gonna go to communion cars again. Oh and we won't need to do that. Oh the sign in. Because one of the things like I said, you know, it creates a bond right there. So we're getting people together yeah. you know, versus that oh, that's smart, yeah, no, I get that. So. There you go. We'll get it all figured out by the time the crisis is over. <laughs> thank you, Dean. Say hi, Marilyn. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you.